Hello everyone, it's myself, Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie as usual. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be, well as per the title, expanding my buttered mail. Now I've got, you can see right here, I've got the real thing, the riveted shirt, but I don't have the kit to actually do any expansions or modifications to it. I only had, that I bought years ago, around a similar time to the buttered shirt itself, a whole set of buttered rings, so I've been Make a few things uh, just over here, let me take the magnets off of it. I've got some chaucers, well, a chauce so far that I've been working on here. But um, I was thinking, I might as well expand the sleeves on this because even though it is pretty much just costume armour, firstly, I can try to contract these sleeves into something much tighter fitting and have them into a full length hauberk. So, Thought you might want to sort of see a time lapse of me expanding from this to the finished product. So let's see how it goes. Oh, and uh, in terms of the kit, uh, what I usually use is this, which is this. Is, this particular case is a home base five-piece precision pliers set. They're basically thin-nosed pliers. Uh, these luckily come in different varieties. These are the main ones I use. They're basic, sort of long and thin ones. These ones are more flat, so when I'm gripping onto a ring by its side, it's less inclined to twist around the ring and just grip tight because it's got a flat head and grips properly. And for weird, awkward angles, I've got this one as well, which is a sort of a curled end. Beyond that, I've got for snipping weird burrs and things from the manufacturing process of the rings, I've got this as well. And I don't really use these. So yeah, it's that and buttered rings which look like this just rings the way you'd make them if you're making them en masse is you have some you know the appropriate gauge of wire curl it around a rod or something and then when you've got this coil you can then just go with uh, little tin snips or something and cut them up and then they just drop apart as individual rings so yeah let's get started shall we so, as you can see, putting it all together ring by ring, and you'll see in a moment that I'm opening the rings sideways rather than outwards. Reason being, if I open it outwards upon closing it again, because it's a springy material, it would probably open itself enough that it could end up falling apart out of the patterns if I did it enough times, and just generally cause issues. So I open them up sideways, and then when I close them again, I deliberately move it further past where it should be aligned, and then it actually springs back into the correct position. I imagine with making riveted mail, it would probably be the opposite, because they actually need to not line up perfectly, they need to sort of overlap, and you should close in outwards and inwards, and then they'd spring out a bit, until hopefully the hole for the rivet aligns perfectly. Uh, beyond that, uh, you'll see I'm actually using my jumper, or as some might call a sweater. The reason being, it's, well, I'm there with it in the arm of the male, so that rather than looking at two layers at once, I'm actually just looking at the one layer which is relevant to what I'm modifying at the time, as opposed to having to sort of use guesswork and try to look at both layers at once. And you'll actually see in a few minutes when it does a, a sudden cut, that's actually when I move the actual sleeve of the jumper and of the male shirt to do another section of it because I don't want just a, a rectangle hanging out from there. And it does turn out in the end I didn't get the arm finished all the way to three quarters or a full sleeve because it's, it was just taking so long. It takes literally thousands of rings to make a shirt and frankly the daylight disappeared before I could even make you know that, that much progress on it. At least it still shows the process of the whole thing being made. So like I say, it goes into the usual four in one, so then with that I'm actually sort of having a sort of two in one going on at the edges, because of course there'll be rings on their own on the outside edge. And another thing worth mentioning is that sometimes you'll see a degree of triangulation start to happen. And there's a bit of experimentation you have to do and practice with mail. And you actually have to, in the end, do sort of three in ones and occasionally you might even have to do a lone male ring in another male ring and then fix a part of the pattern later with different rings. So you, again it does require a fair bit of patience and 
sort of memory and understanding and it, it is it's one of those things that gets better with practice I mean it is frustrating at first to use mail and you know actually make it but in the end it's quite rewarding I'd say and for the same reason although I have already recommended in this video and others about using riveted mail if you're going to do cutting tests use it as armor for reenactment or martial arts or whatever but just for the purposes of making it, if you're a beginner, I would still recommend using button mail, so you can at least get a bit of practice in, make a few items, maybe some armoured gauntlets or chaucers or even a whole shirt or something, a bishop's mantle, all kinds of things, and then when you've got the practice in, you can move on to using riveted rings and not have to do things like make a mistake in the pattern, maybe going the wrong way or something, and then have to either carefully remove the rivet again or have to get some kind of pliers or shears and basically cut the ring itself open or multiple rings open and you know waste them so yeah again it's good for beginners and actually I've looked in places like this website called MAIL which stands for MAIL Artisans International League and that place has got other weaves as well so stuff like box weave and Persian twisty things and dragon scale, basically all sorts of complicated patterns that actually could be very useful for making things like jewellery, even with buttered rings. In fact, I think a lot of times they do just use buttered rings because it's just expected to hold up under under its own weight and under normal movement as opposed to going up against weapons. But it's a fascinating resource and even if you're looking at making armour, I have found quite a lot of useful information on there. And heck, maybe sign up and partake. Honestly, I'm not being paid for this. They I think they don't even know I'm saying this, but anyway, yeah, it's, it's a useful resource anyway. Now, um, as, as you can see from the way the mail weaves together, that's one of the things, I, I think the name Chainmail, although some people don't like it, I personally think it's okay because, well, we all know what a chain is, you know, like your standard chain, and then mail is apparently French for net. And that's about right, it's a net of this sort of chain material that accurately summarizes what it is. It's one of the things that makes it so flexible because with each ring, the holes in the middle and the way they've got a bit of give and they can move around on each other, it helps with the fact that it makes it completely flexible. Solid armors, you know, things like um, if you had hardened leather or steel plates or anything else like that, normally they come in large segments and you've just got to have maneuverability or flexibility in between in joints and bits excuse me, often leaving things like gaps. And this is something, again, I've discussed in another video, but it's worth mentioning again. Because with mail, because of that give, even with it taking a whole shirt and covering areas like inside the elbow, the armpits and the rest, it's got that nice bit of coverage still. And that's one of the things that makes it useful, so that rather than in some armors, where you have these gaps where basically you've got exposed flesh and get quite seriously injured, Instead, with something like mail, you can cover important areas. See, so yeah, that's mail in general. As you can see, I am having to twist and contort around with my arms sometimes, and it is a bit of a fidgety thing. Uh, I'd recommend taking breaks every so often, because you can end up leaning in awkward ways, and using your arms in different ways, and you'll end up getting quite weird aches, and I can imagine under long-term usage, you know, keeping on making mail, you probably would end up with some kind of you know, injury, you know, strain type injury in your back or your wrists or areas like that. So again, it's worth doing this in short sort of stints, maybe half an hour or something like that. And then when you've done your bit, you know, you can just sort of leave it, carry on doing other activities and then get back to it another day. That's one of the things that makes it a bit like knitting, really. It's one of those things where you can just pick it up, pop a few rings in. You know, I, I've done it on the bus before in break rooms back in my old job all sorts of places like that and you can just spend a few minutes pop a few rings on and then you know pop the box away you don't even need to carry an item like a whole you know chainmail shirt with you what you do is you just carry small bits and then you can just attach them to the main body